Hi, Catherine here from Circle Art Designs. Today I will be bringing you Project 4 from the Bargain Beatbox series for January. This is the Beaded Labradorite Painted Moon Pendant with an Illusion Necklace. In this project, First of all, I want to show you the illusion necklace. I'm sure other people have done it, but I just learned this technique and I think it's amazing. And the other thing I want to show you in this project is when you get something that you don't quite like, you know, it isn't your cup of tea, you can always change it in some way to where you end up really liking the piece you have done. So let's gather up our things and get started. For the bargain bead box, we will be using the 4mm Labradorite faceted round beads. Don't have them? Any faceted round bead will work. I just love these Labradorite beads. I've never worked with it before. I've really enjoyed it. And next we will pull the 38 by 30 millimeter antique silver brass crescent moon with Labradorite oval. Now this is one that I didn't quite like the color of and so I will be painting this to make it a flat silver. And I will also be changing out the bell on this piece. You can just see my two little wire guards laying on the mat. We'll need two of those and two crimp beads. I'm going to be using uh, crimp number two. We will also need a closure of your choice. I'm going to try the rounded square toggle that came in the bargain bead box, but I will probably change it out for a magnetic clasp. And from my own stash, I will be using these uh, faceted black glass crystals. I'm going to be using the medium size for this necklace. It comes in a set of three strands or four strands, and I think I got it at Michael's. And one more time, I'm going to use the number two crimps, and you'll need two wire guards. Tell you what, whether it's with thread or with wire, wire guards are my best friend. Okay, like I said, I will be painting the pendant. I believe this is called Testors, T-E-S-T-O-R-S -E -S, paint. It's for metal work and uh, I'll be using it in the flat silver. Regardless of which paint you use for metal, make sure you shake it up really well. I take a toothpick sometimes and stir it and then shake it some more because it has a tendency to separate in the bottle. There are several different kinds of this metal paint. The one I chose is the one that washes up with water for the brushes. Okay, let's get started. You're not gonna need a very fine brush for this because this is really little. Lots of little crevices. Now, when I started out around the Labradorite, I wanted some of the, the dark to shine through in the crevices. So I'm very carefully just brushing around the top. If you've ever done ceramics, it's almost like a dry brush technique. Other things we have painted together on this channel, we've kind of puddled the paint, but for this, I am really just using a small amount on my brush. I'll even dab it on the piece of paper before I apply it to the piece, because I'm not sure at this point how much paint I want on it. Okay, let's go ahead and speed this section up, shall we? For my first go round, I'm also using the dry brush technique across the front of the moon. Again, you dip your paint, you dab it on your paper, 
and then you drag the brush across in strokes to get the dry brush effect. That will add just a small amount of silver to this piece. Now I have to tell you, when I was through with the piece and allowed it to dry, I went back and painted it solid because I really like the flat silver. In fact, I ended up putting three coats on this piece before I got the color I wanted it. I did front and back. But when you're changing your piece or adding paint, really take the time to let it dry, look at it and evaluate it, and then add more a little bit at a time. It's really your piece to do what you like with it. Now the first thing we're going to do for our illusion necklace is we're going to pull some wire, some bead string and wire. I'm using the black from Soft Flex and you're going to put your ending on it. Now I did not get the ending recorded so I am going to put how I put the end on for my Labradorite bracelet. It will be the same thing and I want to show you this technique. Okay, beginning with your wire. I know this one's silver, but I'm using the black for the necklace. You're going to cut the length you will need for the necklace. This necklace is an illusion necklace so it only needs about three inches more than the length you want the necklace to be. Now taking your wire guard, you're going to put it through the first side of the little U, go around and bring it back down through the other side. Just like that. Now you could have put your crimp on first before your wire guard, but on the first side I always bring it up from the bottom. So let's put on our crimp. And it should look like that. Now for this step you're going to need a crimping tool. It has a large hole at the back and a small hole at the front. We start with the large hole at the back and it makes an M shape in the crimp. Then turning it and putting it in the small hole, we mash down again and it makes our crimp round, bringing the sides together. For the next stage, you're going to need a bead board. I would lay out my black beads however far you want them spaced on your necklace. This is the length of the necklace. So lay them out. You can use as many of them or as few of them as you want. So beginning with a large black bead, I'm going to bring that all the way down to where we put our wire guard and our crimp. Once you get it in place, put a number two crimp on for this big black bead and you will need a pair of chain nose pliers instead of your um, crimping tool because once you push the number two crimp up to the black bead you're just going to mash across it and mash it down on the wire. Okay, why do I keep saying the number two? because the first time I did this, I put a number one on. And you know what my bead did at the end? It fell through, and I had to do it again. After this, because we're using smaller beads on either end of that big black bead, we will use the number one. It's less obtrusive, and it looks prettier. So we're gonna start with a number one crimp. Then we're gonna put on the Labradorite faceted round bead, the little gray beads. Then we're going to put on a black crystal and another one of the little gray beads. And a, another number one. 
Now what I do first is I put on the number one, measuring it against my beadboard. I hold it in place, pick up my pliers, my chain nose pliers, and crimp it down. And then I put the beads on because that crimp is going to hold it in place. Okay, I cut a little section out. I chased that little bead all over that mat. So let's continue. Okay, we're going to use our four millimeter Labradorite faceted round bead. Then one of the black glass crystal beads and then another four millimeter labradorite bead. And these will be the beads that we hang on this black uh, beading wire. I think that is just a lovely combination. Don't you? Next, we're going to need the number one crimp bead that will hold these beads in place. Now, I keep saying number one, but if you're using a thicker wire, you will, might need to go to a number two or a number three. But for this wire, I'm using a number one. So I have the crimp at the bottom. I've already mashed down with my pliers. I have my bead combination. Then I have the crimp at the top. And now we're going to mash it in place, put it on our bead board so we can measure and see where our next crimp needs to be. And holding our finger where the crimp needs to go, we're going to put on another crimp. So here I am measuring to make sure that I get that crimp in the right place. And we'll continue on. So as you can see, after I measured, I've got the spot marked with my thumb and my forefinger. And I'm taking my other hand and picking up my crimp. And I'm going to move that crimp down and then I'm going to kind of wiggle it underneath my thumb and hold it till I can pick up my pliers. And now we're going to mash it down so that we'll hold the next beads in place. And then I'm going to put on the four millimeter bead, the black glass bead, and the four millimeter bead, and another crimp and mash it down. If you haven't already, would you take a moment and like and leave a comment for this video? And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Thank you so much. Do one more together. Put on your crimp after you've measured and mash it down. Then put your four millimeter on, your black glass, your four millimeter. Move your crimp down as close to the bead as you can and mash it down. Continue with this pattern until you get to the center of your necklace about a half an inch before the center, and I'll meet you back here. There are lots of ways to do the center of a necklace, but this is the way I like to do it. I'm going to put my crimp on, then I'm going to put on my four millimeter, my black, and a four millimeter, and crimp again. Then immediately after that, I'm going to put on two or three either silver seed beads or the gold, I'm sorry, the silver three millimeter rounds. 
and then I will continue up the side, the next side, with a crimp, the four millimeter, the black, the four millimeter, and a crimp. But don't do that yet. First, we have to do the next step. So lay your necklace to one side when you get to the mental, and we'll do the next step because I'm going to change out the bell on this piece. Uh, as you'll see in the pictures, I've, I've gone ahead and put all my paint on it so it's changed the color. And now I'm going to change the bell. And with this bell, you have to put it on the piece before you can finish the next side. So let's continue on. So as you can see here, I'm trying to decide if I like the bell or not. I chose not, and so we'll be changing it. In this first picture, you can see that I've put on my last coat, and I've done the back and the front, so it is a flat silver. What told me I could change this bell is this little piece at the top of this picture. It can actually be pried open. have the bell on of my choice, I put the moon on a piece of paper and I decided what type of fringe I wanted on it. And you can see my attempt at making this in the drawing above. But like all good plans, this changed. And the reason it changed was the shape of that little moon at the bottom. And if you'll look at the picture from the beginning, you will see the fringe I ended up going with, and I really love it. Now these are a size 11 silver seed bead. They're not matte because I was out of matte, but I think that with these silvers, it gives it just that shine to offset the flat silver of the moon. You will also need some beading thread. I decided to go with my decorative silver that I use with my sewing machine. You have to be careful when you're using it so that you don't break your thread. And you have to go through your dangle several times. But I, I like the fact that it was silver and shiny for these dangles. And if you remember, I said I had the beads that came in four different sizes, I will be using the size four millimeter from those black glass beads and the four millimeters from the bargain bead box for this. You will also need a size 10 or 11 beading needle. Now when I start this, I tie my thread onto the bottom of the moon. I do a triple knot in it, and then I will go back and put just a tiny dot of glue on that knot before I cut the string. So for our first seed bead, we're going to put it on to our a beading thread that is tied on to the moon. We're gonna go behind the moon back up and around and through that first seed bead. Then we're going to put on our second seed bead and we're going to bring it all the way down to the moon. Then we have it up on our, we have the, the thread already going through it. So we're gonna bring it down and around and we're gonna bring it back up that second seed bead. This will make a completed loop, but it is also going to join it to the first seed bead because that original thread came out of the first seed bead, had a new one put on, then it's going back around and up to the second one. I'm gonna give you a picture to show you what I mean. anchor row 
and all of your dangers, dangles will hang off this anchor row. I'm sure there are other ways to do it. This is just the way I do it. Because I started out beading first and moved on to other things. So in your first moon, you will see your first seed bead. We're pulling that down to the moon. It's going up through that bead. You're going to circle around and bring it to the front and then go back up in that first bead. And now you will put your second bead on. You will bring that down next to the first one. So that bead is automatically going to be joined to the first one. You're going to go the, you're going to take the needle behind through the moon and back over to the front and go back up that seed bead. Now you've got beads one and two connected not only to each other but to the moon. Then you're going to do the same thing for number three, your seed bead number three. And you're going to continue that all the way across until you get your last dangle on. Once you have come up through that last bead, you're going to go around again and come up in the previous bead. And you're going to do that all the way across to reinforce this row till you get to your first seed bead. Now depending on the project, I either go around from behind and up in the front or around from the front and up this into the seed bead from behind. It really doesn't matter. So for the next step, we will be using the same 11O seed beads. We're going to be using the 4 millimeter Labradorite round beads, a 3 millimeter glass black bead and a um, four or five millimeter glass black bead. That last one we're just going up one size because we want to give it some weight at the bottom. Let's begin. Starting with our first anchor bead. This should be the anchor bead that is closest to the point on your moon. We're going to put four seed beads our labradorite ground our three millimeter black and a labradorite round then we're going to put three seed beads our four or five millimeter black glass round, another labradorite round, and then a seed bead on the very end. This should all be strung on your thread. And then I'll give you the next step. So here I've strung through the labradorite and I'm putting on my three seed beads. Now we'll go on the four or five millimeter black, we're going to call it a five, and your labradorite, and then one more seed bead. I know I'll find the hole in that bead in just a minute. Once you have all your beads on, skip the very last seed bead you put on and bring your needle back through the labradorite, the five millimeter, the three seed beads, the labradorite, the three millimeter black, the labradorite, and the four seed beads. Now four, I say, because you're taking it all the way up through your anchor bead. Pull your thread all the way through, making sure that it's tight, but that it doesn't pucker. If you get it too tight, it'll pucker, but you don't want any slack in it. 
and then bring your needle back down through the next anchor bead and we're ready for the next angle. So for the next angle, I'm going to start off with four of the seed beads. Then I'm going to do a labradorite, a three millimeter black, a labradorite, four seed beads, a five millimeter black, a labradorite, and our single seed bead. So let's string those. So we have our four seed beads on the anchor bead. Now we're putting on a labradorite and a three millimeter black glass bead. And then another labradorite. You might be wondering why I keep laying it on the mat and looking at it with the, the next, the one, the previous one we've done. That's because seed beads don't run true to form no matter what seed bead it is. So I'm checking it to make sure it's either not too long or too short, but the design is going to lay just where I want it to lay. And now we're going to put on our four seed beads. Then our five millimeter black glass and our labradorite ending with a single seed bead. If you haven't already, would you please like and leave a comment for this video? That would be so much appreciated. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to this channel and share this with your friends. That would be amazing and a lot of help. Thank you. Now skipping the last seed bead you put on, you're going to go up through all of your beads, ending with your anchor bead. Tighten them all up, go down through the next bead, and we will be ready to start the next dangle. Okay, I think you're ready to try this on your own. I'm going to insert a picture that will show you what I did for the rest of my dangles. The beauty of this piece, anytime you add a dangle, there are just boo koodles of ways you can put the dangle on, the shapes you achieve, the color scheme, how your lines run. Be inventive and creative and let your creative spirit just soar as you decide what you want your dangles to be. I'll see you on the other side. And here is the beading pattern I used. For anchor bead three, I put on six seed beads, your labradorite, your three millimeter, your labradorite, four seed beads, a five millimeter, the labradorite, and a seed bead. Then for number four, I put on seven seed beads. Your labradorite, your black three millimeter labradorite, four again, and your five millimeter labradorite and a seed bead. And then for number five, which is the last of my dangles, I put on eight seed beads, a labradorite, a black, a labradorite, your four seed beads, your five millimeter, a labradorite, and your seed bead. Now you can make your pattern any way you want, but one of the things you want to be careful of is putting your large beads at the top off of your anchor beads because then they won't hang flat on your chest when you wear it. They will kind of bunch up and I have made that mistake more than once. And now it's time to tie off your piece. What I do is I'm going to take my needle and go under either the front or the back 
with my needle of the first anchor beads threads and I'm going to make a loop go back through pull my string through and make a little knot I will do that on several of them and then wherever I end up I will then take my thread and bring it down through the dangle I've ended on to hide my thread and then clip it somewhere in the dangle itself. Boy, this is a long video. I am so sorry. When I started this, I had no idea. But there are so many intricate parts and there are so many techniques that you learn doing this video that it will stand you in good stead for other projects you're going to do. So I'm running the thread down and then I will clip it. And we are finally back to our necklace. Now you're going to want to put on your center beads if you haven't already. Start with your one number one crimp then a uh, labradorite, your large black glass, a labradorite, and a number one clip, uh, crimp. Now we have some choices to make. First of all, if you're using the Softflex black coated wire, that's meant to show and you want wire that's meant to show. So you could just slip your bell on here. But if you would prefer that it not, your bell not move up and down on your wire, you can put three or four seed beads here and then put your bell on and put your next crimp right up against those seed beads and crimp. And then continue on with your labradorite, your black, um, oh boy, my brain has lost it. <laughs> your black faceted bead and your labradorite and a crimp. Then take your measurement against the side of the other side of your necklace so that your next labradorite, black uh, bead and labradorite match up with that. Uh, that last section that you did before the middle. Once that's done, then you'll just measure as you have been so that there's the same space going up one side as there was the other and your beads match up and finish out that side of the necklace. Almost done! Now once you have it finished, you will need to go ahead and put your wire protector on the second side. And if you want to just zoom back and look at it where we did the first side, that would be awesome. So this doesn't get any longer. Once you have your wire guards on both sides or the wire protectors, go ahead and choose whatever clasp, whatever closure you would like. I'm using the one from the Beadbox Bargain, but I have to tell you, I took it off and put a uh, magnetic one on for me. All you need are two four or five millimeter clasps, whatever size, not not clasps, jump rings, whatever size you would like to have. And then go ahead and put them on the wire guards and through your clasps and you are finished. Thank you so much for joining me on this beading adventure today. And it has been an adventure. Lots of steps, lots of techniques to learn, and longer than I like to do. <laughs> but really, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had a great time. I will see you in the next one. Catherine, Circle Art Designs. Oh, I'll add pictures at the back.